up, everyone? Welcome back to the Heights Podcast. Today, we just want to be personal with you. Connor and I are just going to share a little bit about our, our story so that you know a little bit more of, of who we are. I'm not sure how many people are, are listening, but <laughs> we're going to, yeah, we're going to just share a little bit of our upbringing and we'll just kind of just see where the conversation goes. But we just want to make it personal. Yeah. Share what brought us, led us up to this place. Yeah. Why we're here starting yeah. Kimono Project. So, so, I mean, just how old are you, Connor? How, what would you... <laughs> I am 26, about to be 27. My birthday is August 11th. Okay. So... Cool. Yeah, what about, what about I'm you? I'm 27. Uh, June 6th, I turned 28 alongside my dad and his dad. And you might be thinking, well, obviously we're cousins, but we actually call ourselves brothers. Mm-hmm. So why... I, my dad, his dad are identical triplets. So I share the same birthday as them on June 6. And funny thing is our parents or, you know, our dads kind of got to know in high school, both of our moms. So two guys, two brothers married, two sisters, basically is what we're trying to say. So we are more like brothers is what, what we call it. You might be thinking that's really weird, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's cool. not incest or anything weird like that. If you're thinking along those lines, I made a joke at the University of Alabama after we gave a talk and I just kept it kind of short and simple. Um, I was like, Brendan and I are closer than you might think. We're, we call ourselves brothers because we're cousins on both sides because yeah. our dad's married. What I say? Our, our dads are brothers and our moms are sisters. Yeah. And so they, you know, obviously were part of a different family, not related at all to our yeah. dad's family. And then they started yeah. going on dates. And, and the, and yeah, the sisters, they're not twins or anything. So it's not like my mom's a fraternal be, twin. That is, yeah, that's true. With my uncle Jimmy. Yeah. But yeah, but we are, we're very close. We grew up in the same town in Olympia, Washington, living, a, you know, a few minutes from each other. And so our families are really close, but yeah. Why don't you, uh, you want to sh- start with just your journey of, of life, of life growing up and kind of where you've been and how you've gotten to where you're at now? Yeah. Start kind of from the beginning and then we can, you know, dive into different areas, I guess, of our story or just the ways that we were both there, you know, in different places. So growing up, um, we came, we came from a, a fairly strong Christian households. I'd say your family was a little bit stronger practicing overall. Yeah. I was kind of annoyed in some ways by it. And like my parents wanted to like be like kind of like Brennan's family a little bit more, you know, like um, Involved seen as, you know, the good Christian family. Yeah. And I just was not wanting to be about it as much. I, you know, thought it was just I wanted to have fun. I want, I was, I'm very social. I like to make friends with new people and I just saw it as like rule following and hypocritical and all these things, yeah. um, which is obviously very common, um, when looking into kind of, because we're sinners, right? We're all broken and we we'll, we're all going to fall short, um, of trying to like pursue the idea, which is, which is Christ. And I would say our families also didn't make from my perspective, didn't have like know Jesus, like his heart, like a personal, personal yeah. relationship. And no, yeah, personal relationship, I think is what was lacking. And so growing up, I got a little bit more into the social life, the um, party scene, you might say, pretty young, starting in like eighth grade. And then going through early high school, kind of kept that trajectory didn't have the best relationship with my family or extended family. And, um, yeah, it was just kind of miserable. You know, you're miserable because your family's moving in a certain direction and you're moving in the opposite direction. So like your your family was moving in like the faith, like to the most part, or, you know, like, Oh, we want to be a good practice, you know, practicing Catholic family. We want you to go to these, Youth Um, nights, youth nights, life teen edge. And I was like, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to hang out with my friends. I did not care about school. I was such a bad student. What was your GPA in high school? So in high school, I finished with a two eight, maybe a two nine. In my first two, my freshman and sophomore year, I probably had like a two four, two six. I did not care at all. And then I I realized like, dang, I need to get into Washington State. It's time to turn it on. 
You can, you can have a 2.5 and get into the WSU. <laughs> no cooks. Well, <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe two seven. It's like yeah. really pushing yeah. it. But I, was I think like, Kellen, crap. I think my brother, I think he was about a two nine, maybe. I two. thought he was a two eight. Cause okay. I remember him and I finished he got in. pretty close. I, I was like, a th- I think I was like a three, 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 four. I think yeah. I, I was like, a, like an average student. Well, I did my work, but I wasn't like the smartest. So like on our SAT, I mean, now the SAT has different scoring, but like, I was like just below average cause my reading and writing was, yeah. So I, w- yeah, but I, I did my work. I did my homework. So that's, you know, exactly. You got to do your homework where I, I didn't, you know, as much care too much about that. So I turned it on and, and honestly starting to pers- trying to get better grades really helped me in other ways to realize like, dang, okay, you put in hard work and you're rewarded or you can see the fruits. Yeah. And so little things like that of putting an effort in, in applying myself, I think helped in other areas of my life. So you, you were going down Partyville a little bit yeah. and your parents were not okay with that. And I mean, yeah, yeah. the thing with me in high school was I would dabble here and there but like my parents never knew yeah and like my brother kind of did and and they knew and like my friends did and and all the other parents knew but they thought of me as like oh brendan's not doing any of these things yeah. and i wasn't going like crazy but like there was there was one time in high school where like all the friends we went out to a party and like i was the dd like so i was sober i didn't drink yeah and all the friends did we got caught there was this huge blow we got caught and people are thinking did brendan did he drink right it's like no he was the the dd and it's like oh brendan's this good boy yeah and then it was literally the last right before we went off to wsu there was a party with all of our friends and that was i think the first time that like my my mom or or something like found out that like i drank and there, you know, she was crying. You I said. think she was crying. <laughs> it was just like, well, and I mean, I didn't drink that much in in high school, or I didn't really, yeah, but yeah. So going back, going back to you, what what were you thinking? And were you just like, what's life all about? What am I doing? Like, what were what were you kind of dealing with in high school? Of like. I just, or what, I, were you even thinking about those questions or was it just like, I'm just going to live in the moment and do I what mean, I mean, it definitely was a part of it, but I, I don't know. Like I found a lot of, like I, I can build relationships with a wide variety of people. I, w- I would say whether it's someone who doesn't have any friends, you know, and I, I feel like I've always been able to bring people into the friend group, yeah. right? So like, Oh, I see this guy. I think he's great. Like, well, let's start hanging out with him more. I felt like I've always, you know, been, I don't know, just, I can relate with other people. And so I, I, because of that, and I just, I enjoyed being with people. And I think with our family, and then you can also get into like, just and if you like think deep down of wounds or whatnot, there was also this sense, I think I had a realization at some point of like, dang, I'm the middle child. Like, because our families are so close yeah. and you and Kellen were older than me. And it was like, I, I was, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry, Cameron and Ryan, but like, I it was like growing up, I didn't really want to like hang out with them, my younger brothers. You know, you want to hang out with the older people, and that's always been me in general because I'm also old for my age, for my grade. I was always I'm an yeah. August birthday, and so I was always a year for the most part older than others, and so I always wanted to hang out as well with the older people, and, yeah. and I've always thought of myself, and I don't know, in, like, in a prideful way, or just feel like I was more mature for my age, mm-hmm. and. You know, obviously, yeah. I, I say that or I think that. Who knows what the reality was or in other people's light. But, yeah, so I, I it was funny just because a lot of, like, what got me into trouble or things that were, like, leading me in the bad direction were hanging out with, like, some of, like, your friends or even Kellen's friends. Yeah. And Kellen, you my were... cousin, is four years older than me. And I was hanging out with some of these older yeah. guys. And, and, and it, some of my friends yeah. had older brothers, which also kind of like wrapped us into yeah. like not But the particularly best. if you were like in eighth grade hanging out with a junior, that's a huge difference. I mean, now it's like you're 26 to a 30 year yeah. old. It's like blends. But like a freshman to be hanging out with a senior in high school, that's like freshmen are just having even exactly. Like puberty, maybe. And I think like there was almost a sense <laughs> to me where I thought it was like, oh, this is so cool. Like I'm, 
I'm in with the older people. They think yeah. I'm cool. They don't look at me as this like young guy. Like yeah. they think I'm cool. And then uh, th- maybe some of even the girls is like, oh, Connor's hanging out with yeah these older guys. Everyone wants to be with the older, you know. Yeah, so I was just school. caught. I was just caught up in that because. You know, I don't know. I, I just did. I just got caught up in it. And I think for both of us, Kellen's injury was probably my biggest wake up call to like the reality of death yeah. and like in in God. And the way I think our family as a whole responded was in prayer, turning to like God, not falling into despair and anger and all these negative emotions, which were could be, you know, justified in some way of thinking like why how could god allow this to happen why did this happen it's easy to spiral negatively but like our our family got so much closer and especially closer to god and that was a time in my relationship with kellen had i i don't know if i've told him this so it's funny like when you're like saying something on a podcast but like my relationship with him taught me or gave me the ability to like I don't know. Like I felt like because he was someone I I looked up to just yeah. because he was my older cousin, and then he was put into this place of humility, mm-hmm. right through his brain injury. Literally, like physically, was put in this place of humility, and I was able to be somebody that could like love him in that. Yeah. And so like and when those roles switched, home. you were still at home. Yeah. Exactly, and that was also a big driver where I was. All my friends were going deeper and deeper down into yeah. the party culture and. I would be like with Kellen on the weekends yeah and that helped me in so many different ways because I I was the initial one like I said in eighth grade I started to get involved in like kind of the party culture I was the initial one I think driving a lot of people to like let's you know like what are you doing like let's go let's go party or come come out with us do this and and so for it to kind of flip where I was not where I was moving in the opposite direction now we should so we should probably briefly share what happened to Kellen yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was a senior in high school. You were you were a sophomore. Yeah, so we're sophomore. like about a year apart. But I'm I'm young for my. Hey, I was young for my hey, grade. I'm old. You're old. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so sophomore senior, Kellen, my older brother. He he's my only brother, two years older than me. He was a sophomore in college, and he was playing intramural f- softball, and he was running to home base, and basically the outfielder threw a terrible throw after he hit home base and he was just walking to the dugout and just got hit. He didn't get knocked out. He fell over and like one of his friends came over to him and like was like, we strong, which is their, they were saying they had as a brotherhood, like we strong. He got up, he pitched the last inning. Then he started slurring his words on their way to a sorority party. And then they took him to the hospital and he started declining, brain bleed, airlift to Spokane hospital. We found out that was April 10th, 2014. We drove over and like, I mean, th- that whole story, maybe at some point we could go into it in depth and maybe yeah. even have have him on. Yeah. But for our family, that was like an eye-opening, what is life all about? Um, yeah, I'm not invincible. And in high school, like a lot of people in high school don't have like traumatic experiences or loss or death that opens your eyes. Like I'm not invincible. What's life all about? But that happened to our family and and we drew closer to God together. And his journey was, you know, a couple years of four brain surgeries, occupational therapy, and like wrestling with these questions. And, and even for him, like that was a turning point for him where he would, he told my mom, like, I'm happy this happened to me because it's made me realize what's important in life. And that, that's a blessing, I think, for a whole family because it, it's easy in those situations to just run. Like, I'm going to escape. I'm going to block my heart and not feel. But our family, our relatives, uncles and aunts came together. Yeah. And, yeah, that that was my biggest – well, I mean, I had it a lot because I joined a fraternity in college. And then fresh – you know, still wrestling with this question of – what's life all about yeah and then sophomore year i made a decision okay i'm uh, if i'm catholic or christian you know why i want to know the truth and i want to live it and be the best man so it 
it was a slow process and obviously still working on it but yeah and we were blessed with focus missionaries on our campus which i i i owe a lot obviously i did two years of focus at the university of alabama which was due to the focus missionaries because i had no idea what focus was i didn't know how to live like a deep catholic life and also be like a normal dude and and then your theology of the body um internship as well was just like another jump jump forward and so like god after like it's so true like if you give god an opening if you give him a yes or say i'm here you know i'm open like he is going to just yeah he's gonna boost you forward and yeah you know it's so easy we always wrestle with like wanting to control our lives and have it turn out a certain way and look at different but god if you give him control like you will look back and and be just in awe of what he was able to do that yeah. if you had the ability to have your life look a certain way there there's no way you'd end up where you were which i've yeah. always it's always been for the better yeah yeah so and it's it's interesting even in high school because as I, i'm re- remembering in high school and even early college like you think you know it all or you think it's like i'm the center of the uh, world yeah. like nothing can phase me like parents they don't know anything my teachers <laughs> they don't know anything yeah. And you're you're partying and it's like, yeah, this is this is life. This is fun. Yeah. And the parents are saying, hey, like, you got to be careful. Like mm-hmm. this could lead to that, you know, like gateway drugs or party culture. Like and you're just like, come on, like it's everyone's fun, yeah. doing it. And then it's like you realize, OK, people that I knew in high school or college that kept going down that path. Well, today they, you know, you know, their life's like been shattered and now they're in this real big healing journey. Yeah. And I mean, that's just, you know, through maturing, you realize, and even as we age, even now we're, we're still young and we'll still continue to learn, but there needs to be a sense of like humility, you know, towards, towards life, how to treat one another and live. And I think Kellen's accident and then the pursuit of truth, you know, with our, our faith. And then, like you said, like I, for me, it was, like freshman year, I was walking back from a party, like stumbling back next to the church. And I look inside the church and I like hear God's voice in my heart. Like, what are you doing, Brendan? Like, what are you doing? And like, that was a, that was a moment where it's like, okay, what's life all about again? You know, yeah. like that, that always hits us, but it's like, are we going to just avoid it and be like, yeah. oh, that's just another thought. Or it's like, no, I need to make an action. Okay. This thought's coming to me. What is life all about? Why am I here? Do I acknowledge am it? I igno- am do I, gonna- I go deeper and do yeah. it or do am- I just brush it off? Yeah. Whether that be reading, praying, talking to friends, opening up. Mm-hmm. And like, then I went on a retreat sophomore year and <laughs> got hit by love. And then, you know, okay, I'm all in and I'm going to say yes to everything now because yeah. every time I do say yes, life becomes clear. Yeah. I become happier, I become better. And then the internship with the theology body and so it was almost like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And then at that point, after you've had enough, like where you've encountered God, like multiple, multiple times, you're just like, this is the real deal. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I think we can speak a little bit to like, Hey, like, sure. We grew up in a Catholic home our whole life, you know? And some people are like, Hey, you haven't experienced doing this or this, like you've been Catholic, you've been in this safety net or however you want to call it, but call it, but no, we dabbled with party culture. Like we hung, we had a lot of friends who weren't religious at all. And like, we were surrounded by that a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of know what it's like to live a certain life, you know, kind of divorced from not fully divorced from God, but party culture versus, okay, I'm going to try to live a life of I'm fully dedicated to God. Yeah. And it's way better, you know? Yeah. And I, I would, experience. even growing up, I didn't even know what that looked like. Like, I, I remember thinking if I ever go to a daily mass, I'm like, I'm going to be the best Catholic ever. Like, I didn't know what it truly even meant to have a relationship with God, to give him your entire life, to make him the center of your life. And then you said, and it, I've thought about this recently, just like a little bit throughout the years, but that n- basically none of our friends were, ca- were Catholic. I mean, we had some growing up or even like really Christian, like sure there was some, you know, growing up, it's like, oh, let's go to this young life thing. And that might happen at the beginning of middle school, but then at least my, none of my friends, and I think yours probably as well, were like really about faith. 
Yeah, no. We're like, Everyone was like, yeah, like Christian. I believe in God. Yeah. Or I go to a church on Sunday or yeah, I go to Young Life small group, which was which was great. And, you know, we read scripture, but but no one where it's like, gosh, God's the center of my life. Yeah. You know, there, you know, it was more of like, no, God, God's God and he loves me and I'm good and I'm just going to have fun. And, and then obviously as high school continued to go, like we went further in high school most people became agnostic or at least the way that they lived out their life was very yeah after you're saying after college or after or high school late high school at yeah. least for me like a lot of people i think yeah. kind of the acknowledgement of god wasn't as much a, th- a thing yeah yeah for me it was i think high school no i mean okay you're in high school you live at home you're gonna if mom and dad say you're going to church you're most likely going to be going to church and then right when you get off to college it's like you're on your own you're on your own and if yeah if you if there wasn't this personal intimate relationship with jesus then it's going to be very hard to continue practicing your faith or going to church or joining a group unless it's simply just like oh i've always done that you know but that's not gonna keep you there for long if it's just simply like well it was just kind of a tradition with my family so i just kind of kept it up yeah. You know, so a lot, yeah, a lot of people that I knew and, and people might say, you know, like my, my mind kind of opened, you know, I, I met Muslims, I met atheists, all these different religious religions, and they're great people. And they believe that their religion is the truth. And I respect that, you know, we're all pursuing God, we're all pursuing truth. And th- but okay, I get it. I mean, there yeah. might be some partial truth within certain beliefs, but I mean, that's a little ramble, but I think at the end of the day, we all have to come to a point of what is truth. Yeah. I think that's what we've, we've ultimately face. And even like you and I had a lot of conversations like driving to WSU or just going deep in our faith, or even I think in high school or definitely college bonfires out by my, or at my house where, you know, we would talk about deep things. We would think about you know, within the Catholic faith, all these miracles yeah. the, that happen even to this day, all these Marian apparitions, how could these make sense? Are these real? Did that actually happen? Yeah. We're all, there are all these Eucharistic miracles. Yeah. And so we, we, we die, we visited a lot of these, these questions, the biggest questions in life, yeah. which most people, right, want to push to the side. And we were talking about them and we were like, if this, you know, if this is real, then this means everything for us. So we were faced with these existential questions, which led us to, to God and to deepening our, our own faith. Um, so share a little bit just about your time in high school right now. We're kind of walking through high school that we can go to, to, to college. Um, yeah. What, what was high school like for you and then going off to college? Yeah. For, so high school, Honestly, like I had amazing friend group and our, our high yeah. school class, even the teachers were like, your guys' high school class is like, great. Like we actually like a lot of athletes, a lot of Christians in high school and, and we were all very close with one another. Like we had fun. It was like, people would say like, they're good kids. You know, at least, you know, my friend group, my, you know, which was like say 30 a big friend group of 30 like all good kids so i enj- i loved high school people thought of me as the good boy catholic you know who who's not cussing all the time or who's not smoking weed or who's not getting plastered drunk like brennan's the good boy he's he's saving himself until marriage and you know so because of that i felt a little bit like this outsider a little bit like do i really belong if i'm but I would do it. Uh, there would be a judgment in my heart if, like, oh, people are doing all of these drugs. Like, that's bad. And, you know, in my heart, I'd judge them or, you know, be pharisaical, which is, you know, based off of just strictly law when interiorly, like, you want to do everything that everyone else is doing. So, I mean, that was that. But it, that wasn't a huge effect, you know, and. I, you know, I had girlfriends and I don't want to necessarily get into to all of that right now. I mean, I think a lot of people have heard about my dating, dating experience, but golf was big mm. for me. And, you know, I, I, there's always the question, 
you know, who do you want to be? What do you want to do? You know, and really that's a huge question because it's, I mean, sure, your career and what you do isn't your identity, but it's like, okay, this is going to be really most of my life, like your, your work and what you wanted to get into. And so like, for me, I was like, a, I want to be a math teacher. And then at a certain point I wanted to golf and, um, I wanted to be, <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy, but I wanted to be a professional golfer and we, I probably could have golfed in college. You know, I, I took fifth at state, <laughs> got a hole in one at state, which is like one of the greatest moments in my golfing career. And I probably could have golfed in college, but I, it wasn't passionate about it. Freshman year in college, it was the first year of my life I didn't golf and I missed it. And everyone's like, you gotta walk on the WSU team. And I did, and I, I, I practiced like 40 hours a week in the summer, working like 20 hours, like dedicated everything. And you, if you know golf, you, I had to shoot six over or below in the span of four days. And, and they only take one person. And so there's like 10 of us trying out for the team, for the team. And I shot, I went 71, 74, 74. So I was six over going into the final day. And there was only one other guy who was like tied with me. And so it's just us two playing the final day. And on the very last hole, I have a five foot putt. He has a five foot putt. I miss it. And I shoot six over on the dot, 71 that day. And he made it shot five over. And I walk over to the, to the assistant coach and I just looked at him. And he's just like, I don't know what to say. We're, we only can take one. And I didn't know what to say. And I get in my car and I started like crying because it was like, I'm passionate about this. I want this. Like, I want to dedicate my life to like golf and like becoming pro. And I met with the head coach, like, give me a shot. Like I'm playing just as good as the people on the team right now. And he's like, we actually didn't want anyone, you know, like we just do this tryout. No one actually plays well. And he's like, yeah, no. And oh. that, that literally was the end of my golfing career, so to speak. And I, I, you know, I prayed with God, like, Lord, I'm going to give it my all. And if it doesn't work out, I'll be at peace. And, you know, I was at peace with it afterwards, but it at that moment, like that last year, sophomore in college, freshman, sophomore, college, I was like, golf is my thing there. There's always been like, this is my thing. This is what I want to do and dedicate my life to. And then theology of the body hit. Yeah. And that's where it's like for the past seven years, that's been, you know, I believe my calling and, um, so who, I mean, yeah, that's, I don't know. I thought about the golf thing and, but yeah. Any, any thoughts on any of that? <laughs> well, I forgot that was such a big thing. I, I, yeah. It was, it was like, I forgot like, yeah. Uh, out of nowhere, you're just like, all right, I actually want to like try yeah. and do this again. And I was playing, yeah, I was practicing eight hours in the summer a day. And I loved it. Like that wasn't before in high school. It was like, I yeah. practice 15 hours and sometimes I'd win these small tournaments and like people I was competing against were like practicing like always. And it was like, I'd rather hang out with friends yeah. rather than going golfing. And then like freshman year of college or that summer in between freshman and sophomore year when I was playing, I loved it. Like I love this. And I was like, I'm going to give it my all. And I had a good co golf coach and like, yeah. And I performed well. I went, you know, yeah. That was the best I've ever played at that tryout. And that was brutal. That was so uh, brutal. Palouse, a great place to play. Yeah. Love that course. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot that was such a big thing for you. Yeah. See, that was different where that like turned for, you know, you, growing up because we were all big golfers and then you like fell, you had a deeper love for it towards college. Ryan kind of had a similar experience, I think, too, recently where he yeah. started to fall in love with it again a little bit more. I was a little bit more temperamental growing up and golf just made me so mad. It like yeah. golf brought out the worst in me, but I also similar to you or to, it was either I, I had an offer from St. Martin's. I mean, not a D one in my ultimate thing. I it was just like St. Martin's offered you a scholarship or yeah. I mean, small scholarship, but oh, I, didn't, I didn't even know. I didn't know that. Yeah. And I was just like, go to this D two school, play golf or go to a Washington state yeah. and like go join a fraternity. And for me, it was like, I'm not that passionate about golf. Like, yeah. sure, it'd be cool to, like, try and give it a shot. Also, shout out we were, Joe Highsmith. We competed against him growing up, and now he's on the PGA Tour. Kind of going off. He's he's the man. He's uh, top, top five right now in the in tournament, tournament. The Houston, Houston, 
Open or something like that. Yeah, yeah so I probably I think I beat him at some point. <laughs> yeah. Did you beat him? You beat him. We, didn't you? we beat him. Nolan Backman and I yeah. went like he Nolan shot I think a sixty eight or sixty nine time on and I think I shot a seventy one uh-huh. and we needed because we played Bellerman and they were like the yeah. best and I didn't we didn't beat their team all of all my four years but this year Nolan and I were like we got a good team yeah Riley was I think number three uh, Chase Bath was yeah. in there we had a, we had a solid team I think Jake Nixon and um name dropping all these yeah, people that but was fun. Yeah, yeah nolan and i beat we needed to beat rj and joe by a good amount to, to give the rest of the team because bellerman is so deep and so we were like we need to yeah. like and so i'm pretty sure we beat rj and joe by like eight strokes and we were like we we're gonna win this yeah. and we lost by like oh, one or two and it yeah. was just brutal but joe is going off it's really cool to see him he just had what i didn't have and just such like a love for the sport and yeah. he wanted to just and he was very talented and just wanted to grind it out and now he's on the tour which is crazy just, that is crazy that's yeah. just nuts but it would be he won so many tournaments and we were i mean yeah he was just so consistent i was all yeah. over the place like i could go low but i, I could also yeah. go very high and yeah, we came from a big golfer's family, both mom and dad's side. Everyone golf for the most part. Our uncle played at WSU, and we're a lot of our relatives. Almost everyone went to WSU. Did everyone go to WSU? Besides, I mean, like Jack. Everyone goes or to like, Washington Or like State. all of our uncles. uncles. And I think like, so. I think everyone okay. basically went. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's, you know, something that I often reflect on because, at least with God in the picture of all this, is I thought God wanted me to be a professional golfer. Like I was praying about it and he, I was like, wow, God's ignited this passion in me. And I feel great. Well, do you think it was from God? No, I think, I think it was, I know. I think it was from God of like, Brennan, you need to do this or else you would regret it. You know, one, one of these days, if you didn't really go after it. And I think it was just a, another step like on the journey. You know yeah. where it, the door was door was closed i mean it could have been like god could maybe have been like to, hey like maybe give it your all walking. like yeah, yeah exactly uh, and then maybe just like through unjust and like not god's will they didn't let you on the team or maybe you should have kept golfing even even though you got xed and yeah. you'd be a professional golfer but yeah we can't always live in the like oh what ifs yeah. and if i and did what? this or that but it's like at the yeah. end of the like god has like led you to this place now and you're at yeah, I probably wouldn't have done an internship with the TOB Institute. Yeah. I I mean, if golf was my life, yeah. there's no – I don't think I would. And the so, amount of souls yeah. that you're able to impact now, I mean, not saying you couldn't by, by doing golf, but, like, so personally, yeah. and you've been impacted, and now you're able to go. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Yeah, I think we just got to – honestly, for me, it's like, okay, do I feel like God's calling me to this? Act and, you know, knock on the door, and he'll shut it if – if that's not what he truly wants at the end of the day. And yeah, and we then, you know, we just do our best. We do, you know, do our best to do God's will and not be scrupulous and scared or afraid because, you know, he's, he wants what's best for us. You yeah. know? So it's, if one thing shuts and it's like, wow, Lord, like I thought that's what you wanted me to do. What are you doing? That made me happy. That made, you know, it's like he sees the full picture. You know, we, we see in the moment at, at times because it's hard we're, for us we're to finite. take a step back. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it's just so easy for us to take a micro view and just like get our nose like so like in with, with what's currently yeah. happening instead of like taking a step back. Um, but how about we give like a quick kind of summary of our college experience and then how we kind of got here into like to him on them. Um, yeah. Yeah, college, I mean, we joined the same fraternity, Sig Eps, Sigma Phi Epsilon at WSU. And I mean, I'll be honest, I mean, like, yeah, I made, I made mistakes, you know, here and there. But like going back to the GPA, I think it was like a 3-2, kind of stick, stick with that kind of average, <laughs> or, you know. But I honestly had a great college experience. Like I loved going to the football games and tailgating with our families, like – even my fraternity, sure, there were some things that led me down paths I shouldn't have gone, but I also met a lot of great people. And and then, yeah, it's junior year was when we got involved with Focus, when we had Focus come to our campus, and, like, we met some awesome Which was my missionaries. Year. Like, that was, yeah. that was huge. Like, shout out to Carter Hawkins, John Pavelic. You know, they, I mean, we, I got personally close with them, and 
I mean, we had awesome missionaries and that really, you know, we were on pretty similar paths cause you joined SIG apps too. I mm-hmm. mean, all of us, even my brother, Kellen, like Kellen joined SIG apps and then I did, and then you did. And we all had this kind of probably similar journey of like, and even, even Ryan, you know, our, his younger brother is kind of on, on a similar journey, joining fraternity, kind of dabbling in the party culture. And then slowly going more to church encountering god missionary bible study like all in yeah. like that's that's kind of been crazy that now that i think about it is that and it, that's has brought us even closer together as as a family i think har- harder for ryan in in a lot of ways i mean he, the strength he's had because he didn't have any cousins there didn't have any focused missionaries not saying what they have set up now at washington state is yeah. like amazing because I, I mean i haven't really witnessed any of it but for us like obviously focus impacted me so yeah. so much um but ryan's kind of just there by himself yeah. he joined teak which is kind of a little bit of a crazier fraternity and he like from what i've heard seen he like he's stayed strong and is yeah. pushing deeper in his faith and yeah it's is a big witness so that's like hard to do and we had each other like in college yeah, yeah. ryan is like there alone exactly and yeah. he's all i mean he's always i mean i've never actually talked to him about this but like being the younger cousin seeing all of the older that would probably also be be hard yeah well something some that's sense. also like for sure oh that would be hard and something but he's also said and has helped me in my life to realize like that every single thing that i do truly matters and makes an impact in this world and on the people I especially i'm the closest to and love the most where i like growing up wasn't the best brother and but then when i had my conversion like ryan and cameron were like you used to be like such a mean brother but now like you're so like so yeah. nice or all, what I, you know like they've they've seen in real time my conversion happen and it truly has made a positive impact on their lives which is a, a great yeah. blessing um so like they are able to look at the example and like the lives that we're le- like leading and also to say the stuff that i did probably contributed to to a lot of the things maybe ryan has done and so it's like it there's it's easy to always play that justification game like me too like oh if kellen or brendan did this and that was a blessing for me too with you kind yeah. of leading the way in some ways for me to like say all right like i got someone in the game with me like if yeah. brendan like is staying strong in this area then like i want to stay like yeah it, it helps back up my what i want to do yeah too. and i remember that's super interesting because as a sibling, it's like my brother. Yeah, it could be like my brother's doing this. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. He's he's my role model. Like, and it's we don't often think about that. That it's like okay, as a brother or even a friend, like I might be a significant role model yeah. to this person. So what I do matters. Yeah. And I remember my brother. He would, you know, if he, um, you know, kind of in the party culture. I remember I went to WSU to visit him, and like was was drinking and he would say to me like brendan like like stop it like i could see he was protective yeah. over like stop <laughs> and when and like he, he was drinking and then he saw you drink too yeah it, w- it was kind of like we were going to a party and we were like having some drinks before and like I, you know i was kind of yeah getting into you know, it getting into it and and having fun and he was just like whoa 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 like dude like slow down like as kind of like, but as an older brother saying that to his younger brother. And then even in high school, he like, and I don't know if this was his reason, but like maybe sir, if he went out to parties, like I didn't know about it. Like he, like he hid these things from me or like yeah. as, as brothers, like he wouldn't talk about certain, certain things. And I think that's more of like being protective over like yeah. my younger brother. But yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, we have influence, you know, as siblings on one another more than yeah, more than we probably think of, but yeah, so college. Yeah, any any other thoughts on on college, college experience, college life? That could honestly be an entire podcast in itself. Yeah. Kind of my experience. Long story short, I joined a fraternity. Fraternities, you know, like you said, like I had a great time in a lot of ways, met a lot of amazing people, made some decisions I probably wish I didn't, but also like stayed like pretty strong and focus helped a ton. And I ended up getting really deep into my faith through the challenge and like the face of 
how college is completely polarizing. Like you're either got, it's an easy, you can easily choose the bad and it's kind of hard to choose the good. Um, and luckily we're a pretty stubborn family. We like to kind of think, kind of go, go to bat with facing the hard and choosing like, so choosing the good was also like, all right, all these people are going that way. Like I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. Like i think that this is like the best way to like live. And, and obviously I didn't do the best the entire time, but, um, yeah, I ended up getting moving out of the fraternity for just kind of a stupid reason, but I got evicted for just drinking in the fraternity, you know, because we were, we were a dry fraternity, which means you can party outside of the house, but not inside. Yeah. It's a whole story. I basically didn't get the, the, I, I got treated probably not fairly got evicted, moved in with you yeah, guys. It was yeah. a completely like divine thing where I asked uh, a friend that I knew to to live with you guys. Yeah. And he ended up not moving in because it was too dirty or whatever the reason was in the summer, yeah. which led to you got, he wasn't paying and he signed the lease. And Mishka, yeah. I'm pretty sure one of your roommates was like, we need to sue this guy. Like if he's not gonna pay like thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. from rent, and I was like, hey, I just got evicted. Can I come live with you guys? And I told the other guy, like, just pay the first couple months and I'll start paying your lease. Yeah. So I got just a, like the best situation, you know, like you just came back, I'm pretty sure from the, yeah, you just came back from the Theology oh, the of the Body yeah. internship. On, you were yeah. on fire. Kellen was there finally back to Washington State after college. Yeah. He might've been there even my freshman year, but regardless, like living with you and him and then CJ, our current roommate, yeah. and then Braden, Braden our yeah. other really good family We friend. had such a great time. Like yeah. that was, yeah. that was also a and massive got, turning point for me. I remember yeah. living in the fraternity my sophomore year and I was like, God, get me out of here. Yeah. Because I was so just consumed with everything going around, uh, going on around me. Yeah. And I was just, I was miserable and it like, if you don't acknowledge how to face that and you're just experiencing the the brokenness and, and the hardness of yeah not living a virtuous life, then you can just easily get, yeah. you know, thrown down the spin cycle into the wrong place. And yeah. so God, it completely answered my prayer. I wasn't mad at all when I got evicted. Like, yeah. obviously, everyone in the fraternity was super uh, yeah. pissed off. And I, but I was just like, you know what? I I needed that. Like, God yeah. answered my prayer. So um yeah that was yeah. a good year senior year that was really yeah. good year and then after right after that cj and i and and carter focus missionary we went off to calcutta india for a month-long mission trip and that like then i went and got my master's in theology for marriage and family and then obviously after that like director formation back at wcu and then he wanted project but that was the yeah, being a missionary in India for a month was, I mean, again, and I, I'm kind of thinking that, so we were saying, I was saying yes to God, like sophomore year retreat, junior year, I went to internship and I was then even an intern for St. Thomas More at WSU. And like, I kept saying yes and yes. And like, life got better. I began to be a better person you know, a better friend, a better brother, a better son. And then I said yes to, yeah, the TOB shirt internship, St. Thomas More internship, and then one month in Calcutta, India. And I like that, I was just like, I'm saying yes to like everything. It's like, this is, and at that point it was like, this is, this is life. Like this is what you it's all about. Full and full yeah. Life. And I mean, you know, still making mistakes here and there. It's, you know, but, and that's, you know, if anyone's listening, it's like, be patient along the journey. It's like, keep giving your yes, keep opening the door. But my master's, that's when this could be a whole nother po podcast episode. But when I went and got my master's, like I was in the brutal darkness, yeah. I was in desolation, darkness, anger at God, feeling abandoned. And, and I'm still young, you know, I'm still young. And it's like this journey following God. It's like, it's not going to just be like, wow, I'm so happy. Like, usually that's, the, you know, that's the following in love process. Yeah. It's like consolation, feelings, emotions, this high, this yeah. like, wow. Encountering new things. But as you, yeah, a relationship, it's going to be like, do you choose me? Like, yeah, are you going to, yeah. It's, it's hard today. Do you choose me? Yeah. Like, what do you do? Yeah. I remember talking to you when I was, because I was a senior and you were like going through it. And I think I was, I don't know, going through it too, maybe. I, I remember we had a lot of conversations like as I was discerning doing focus just about that. Um, 
But yeah, I came back my so I went junior year to Barcelona, Spain to study abroad, and I w- that's what, maybe we talked we talked then when I came back. But I was just that was one of the hardest times of my life. I've had some pretty hard like internal like struggling with like anxiety, maybe like small depression. I, I'm really hesitant to say it's like deep or bad, bad depression, but definitely it's a lot of depression um, or na- sorry like sad feelings. And Barcelona is when I like was encountered. Do you need to like pause it? No, no, I think we got a little bit. Okay. So in Barcelona, I, I was like encountering the biggest questions of life. I, 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 well, I didn't think God kind of existed for a second. I had like some atheistic thoughts constantly day in, day out as I was experiencing suffering all around me in Barcelona. And I didn't have any, like I, I was ripped away from going to daily mass and a lot of these people and influential um, leaders in the faith um, were, were gone. And so it was just me. And I would like still, I would, that's when I developed a prayer life though, because like I wasn't going to daily mass as much. And so I it would stop by the chapel most days after um, class. But I like abroad was am- amazing in so many ways, but also like the hardest part probably in my life. And I came back and that's when I like knew like, okay, I need to give like Jesus everything. Yeah. And then that's when I like started to pray a holy hour, go to daily mass and um, I knew what I needed to do just by like also seeing the life of the missionaries and wanting to like become like they were and and ultimately like that stems from a relationship with God and like prayer and like divine intimacy yeah. um, which is like knowing the heart of God and like living in relationship with him. I went off to do focus for two years at the University of Alabama and that was again well it was the first year was the best year of my life like just the best year ever. God was working in so many ways. And I mean, he always is, but often we try to say like, oh, if I'm struggling, like God must not be working, which just isn't the case. Yeah. But it's easy to, to allow our emotions to try to justify if God's there or not. Um, and then my second year was like, I said Barcelona was the hardest year of my life. That was the hardest year of my life. The second year. The second year of focus, not for like reasons of like, oh, focus, this, that, like focus was still amazing. And I still had an amazing time, but like I had some internal things going on, which then led into like, and then when I was living at Alabama after focus, like some like kind of like depression, deep depression, um, and just was struggling. And, um, yeah, so then I, I transferred out of Focus, an amazing summer, kind of coming off a hard year with Focus, but then I went to Napa Valley um, with Focus, did summer projects, and that was like one of the best summers ever. Um, and it was just the best way to like transfer from Focus to then, I'm working rem- at Rembrandt and Company, so doing like mm-hmm. construction, we do commercial woodworking basically, um, for like health, uh, we do a lot of healthcare work, you know, like cabinets, countertop stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which I got the job basically by like playing basketball, I think with the owner, yeah. which is a pretty cool way to, um, get a job, but, <laughs> um, came here, decided, I decided to, to take that job cause it also helped me to go remote to, to come move here with you guys. And, um, then we started Humanum. What, what yeah. kind of, I guess we can, I don't even know if we've shared that story of why we ended up doing Humanum, but I ended up moving in with you and CJ because when you guys decided to move down to Nashville, um, I knew I wanted to stay down south. And I was like, I'm leaving Focus. So I'll come join you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. 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 And then, I mean, my journey of being in Nashville, I've been in Nashville for two years. And I'm not going to necessarily get into, like, my work journey because that's that's a whole long story. But basically, yeah, eight months ago, we, we started Humanum Project. And mainly as I was able to do it full time because I was speaking and doing retreats on the side with, you know, theology of the body stuff. And it it started growing to a point where I could could give it a go full time. And and then you. Yeah, you were just like, let's let's do something together. But yeah. And then maybe we can even at some point we can maybe even have a podcast episode of how it how it has been going, you know. But I think I mean, I think it'd be good maybe just to kind of wrap it up. Um, but I mean, I think the big thing, you know, the one takeaway, and then I want to kind of hear what the one takeaway for, for you would be, well, I'll just ask you for, you know, what, what would, what would you say to, to the listeners or advice or based off of your, your journey of life that, 
you know, you're 26 years, you know, would you, what would you say? Uh, um, I don't know. What's kind of like coming to me right now is like leave the past in the past and like turn to God now, like allow, um, like God is always right. Like wanting more of our heart, more of our attention, more of our love. Like he created us out of love for love, um, to be loved. I believe that's kind of, I don't know if that's JP too. Yeah. Yeah. Out of love for love or yeah. From love to love for love to love (laughs) something. All, all, all all the love, but basically like every, every yes, in which we said at the beginning, every yes that I have given God, I have not regretted. It doesn't mean that it hasn't been challenging. It isn't hard. And obviously, as you can tell, Christians are persecuted in this world and people will look at you and think you're crazy. But I have been blessed to encounter the reality and the truth of God and the love of God and and to truly know in my heart that God is love. Yeah. And, And that everything that I have as I said, every yes I've given to God, he has multiplied. Yeah. Like everything that I could do on my own or the way that I would want to live my life just would not compare to where I'm at now. And, and even if, even through the suffering, even through the pain, even through all the questions or like God has given me more than I could ever receive by trying to go get by myself. Yeah. yeah. And I would say, yeah, for me, like, I, I have just always wanted to like be the best that I could be, you know, what does that mean? Well, I had to like actually think about it. Like, what does it mean to be a good man? And I've always wanted to be like, I want to live life with no regrets. Like I want to live it to the full. And what I've realized what that means is like in times of like having fun and joy and happiness, it's like living that to the full in times of sorrow and sadness. It's like to feel that or, you know, to like, yeah, be fully human, fully alive. And what I have found through following God is, is that, you know, and it doesn't mean like everything will just feel good. That's not what it means, but it means in the midst of different storms or struggles in my heart, there's a peace. I am there, there, there's just a peace, so to speak. So, and I only had that because of being like grounded with God. And then when I kind of reject God and I'm in a storm, I'm just like panicking and like freaking out. So, I mean, I think my, my one advice, and I usually share it when I do retreats or if I was teaching, it's, it's like asking all the guys and the girls, like, think about who, who do you look up to the most? Like, who's your greatest role model and, and why? And most people will say, well, they live for themselves. Like most, most people have a, a, an awareness of this is what a real good human being kind of themselves no or they they don't live for themselves maybe i said they live for themselves they don't live for themselves and they they pour themselves out they love and they they're not this selfish person it's like we typically know you know what a good person is you know generally speaking for me i was like that i was like okay i i know and then it's i had to make a decision okay what are the things in my life that are pulling me away from that and what are the things that I see in my life that are mm. pulling me towards that? And for me, yeah. I, I made a, com- a decision. It's like, all right, enough's enough. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. But And ultimately, that was giving myself to God as much as I could. Like, all right, Lord, I'm all in. Like, yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I would yeah. say. And we can but. go deeper into our story next time, but also I just, by you saying that, wanted to give a shout out to Jamie and Jesse Oakland. They were two, they're a married couple and family that w- literally was that for me and I think for yeah. you too, of like highlighting or living the, the good life, like living a life of suffering well, entering into that suffering and, and also like being on fire for love. Like yeah. they are both amazing role models in my life and yeah in high school where it was one of the biggest totally pushes towards yeah because they were just like so they had a small group with us with all the young kids at their house and we'd meet once a week and that that was huge that was pivotal for i think all of our most of the group yeah or i'd say i'd say all the group but Yeah. yeah so be patient along the journey we're still on the journey and we still fall down we still need to get up but be on the journey and keep cracking your heart open little by little to God. Just give him a little yes and 
he could work wonders. Amen. So, all right. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. God bless. Bye-bye.